welcome to Monroe Must Hangs. I'm your host, David Spiegel. With me today is our head coach of the men's and women's indoor and outdoor track and field teams. Please welcome Coach Leslie Hogg. Now, how are you doing, David? Hey, Coach. Thanks for coming out with me today. Coach Hogg, you've been here uh, about six years at Monroe, and you have a very extensive background coaching at the collegiate level with a tremendous amount of success. Uh, go, you making stops, you know, You've been, you've been in the area for a long time. You know, you were at Fairleigh Dickinson University right before us for a couple of years, but before that spent a long time at Lehman College and before that a long time at Bronx Community College. So you're very familiar with track and field in the New York, New Jersey area, of course. Um, but, you know, I think what too many people don't necessarily know about you is where it all began. So what was your introduction to track and field and when did you first start getting involved in it both competitively and then coaching wise? Uh, really competitively um, in high school. Um, I'm a native New Yorker. Um, I went to a high school that doesn't exist anymore, uh, Rice High School down in Manhattan, um, noted more for basketball than anything else. Um, did okay there, but it was always a sport that I enjoyed. And then I, I was a walk-on at Manhattan College, so didn't even leave the borough because I'm a Bronx native. Um, and I, I earned a scholarship day after my, my freshman year. Um, upon graduation from there, um, I was a grad assistant for a year and, and was teaching. And um, while teaching, um, I was at an elementary school uh, Catholic school. In fact, it was the elementary school that I went to. Uh, they asked me to help out the kids coaching there. Um, it was volunteer and you know, with no, no money involved. So I coached both basketball and track and field. Um, went into coaching basketball for a little while, for about three years. I just kind of concentrated on coaching basketball. And then someone asked me uh, to coach their child track and field. And my kids were about the same age. So I said, I get my sons involved and we started a club. Um, the club was my kind of my gateway into co starting collegiate coaching. Um, I had a fairly successful club. We were really one of the, uh, we were the Bronx, Bronx Express, um, which is now even more of a coincidence uh, and we had became Bronx Express International for a little while. Um, and I was on, I had that opportunity again, because these are older people now, high school and college students who wanted to compete in the summer. So they asked me to coach them. And through that, I ended up at Bronx Community um, where I started out as the men coach, but asked them um, if they were gonna hire me that they also had to have a women's team. So I started a women's team there, mainly because a lot of the athletes that I had on my club team were females and high school students. And I thought it was an easy way for them to transition and still be involved and I can keep an eye on them. Um, stayed there a very long time. Some people say I stayed there a lot longer than I should have, but that was always because uh, of promises I would make. And this happened at the next school also, that if you come here, um, and you want me to train you, that I'll be here till you graduate. Um, and that lasted for 14 years of telling people that I'll be there when they graduate. So I had a lot of graduating classes. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, to go to Lehman College because um, one of the main reasons I went there was um, I had kids for two years at Bronx Community and they would do well after they left me. And I would always say, but man, if I had them for those other two years, what would happen to me? So when I had the opportunity to, to, to be at Lehman, I, I took it. Um, and it was, a, it was a joy. There I got to coach people for four years. Um, and we did, we did fairly well. Um, I guess the high point there was that we uh, actually finished second twice at um, NCAA Nationals. And that was pretty big for a commuter school. Um, then I had this idea that I wanted to see what I could do at the division one level. 
And that's when I went to Fairleigh Dickinson and I was there for two years. I enjoyed, I enjoyed being there. But then someone presented this opportunity to go back coaching kids for two years, but it was at Monroe College. Um, and it was, it was a full-time position. I had never coached full-time before that. Um, I'd always worked full-time hours, but never got full-time back. Um, and I, it was, it, Monroe presented the opportunity of being part of a growing program. Um, and it, the college was growing, the program was growing, and it seemed like something that I really wanted to be part of. Um, so I, I jumped at that opportunity and here I am now. And maybe, maybe I'll get 15 years out of Monroe College, who, who, who knows, but we're, we're, working on, we're working on year six right now. I was gonna say that uh, you've proven your loyalty to your past jobs, of course, you know, spending, what was it, 14 years, 15 years at Bronx Community College and then 16 years at Lehman. So I think we can expect to have you for a while, you know, that's up, to you, so. though. <laughs> that's up to you though. Um, but in your time at those schools, you know, the success speaks for itself. You had, um, you know, I'm reading this now, 11 NJCAA All-Americans at Bronx Community College, uh, three individual national championships there as well. And at Lehman College, like you said, you know, uh, second place at the NJ, sorry, the NCAA Division Three National Championships, also winning the CUNYAC Indoor and Outdoor Championships as well in your time there. So something that you've carried over into your time at Monroe, you know, of course, in the last six years, you know, the, the number of All-Americans and national champions is countless at this point. And it hasn't even been that long. But um, I want to talk about those first few years at Monroe, you know, when you're kind of first jumping back into a two-year program and taking over for a program that was still fairly young at that point. Uh, so what were the first, first few years like at Monroe for you? Um, just getting uh, acclimated to being uh, at a two-year school um, and working with kids. Most of the kids were, I must say, they were ambitious. They wanted to go on um, to do that and move on to four years for the four-year institutions, but not really knowing how and what was expected of them. So it's settling down and um, everybody has their way of, of doing things. And it was helping them get accustomed to me and the way uh, I wanted to function that I felt was more, most productive for me and for them. Um, they're, they're, there was always talent there. Um, and it's just getting the talent to sometimes recognize that they do have talent and then working on what they needed to do to be successful, both in the classroom um, and uh, on the track and, and in the field. Um, because if you're not doing both of those things, um, it makes it more difficult to actually become uh, a success at what you wanna do. And if you say that's your ambition. I would say that again, just over the last number of years here at Monroe, the success speaks for itself. I've, you know, I, I could say it over and over how many all Americans and national champions we've had. Um, but one thing that I would assume helped you when you first got started is that there was some consistency in the program in uh, the now associate head coach of the track and field program and head coach of the cross country program, coach Siobhan Green, who was on episode seven of Monroe must hangs. If you guys want to look back at that one. Um, you know, Coach Green was an athlete here at Monroe and is responsible for the creation of the track and field team when he was a student here. Um, of course, became one of the first stars of the track and field program in its history and has, you know, since, since then, you and him have coached athletes to break the records that he originally set. So um, what's it been like, you know, the past five or six years working side by side with Coach Green and uh, the relationship that you two have established? Um, it's been great for me. Um, it made the transition easier. Um, and who knows what I would have survived in the beginning with, without Coach Green. I was, I was familiar with um, Siobhan because he ran for a club that I coached with. He, he was a runner with the Central Park Track Club. Um, and I wasn't one of his coaches because he's middle distance and, and distance and I was a sprints and jumps coach. Uh, but we, exchanged views on track and field and, and, and talked a lot. And um, 
when I found out that he was going to be uh, one of the people that were there, I know it would make my life immensely easier uh, because of his presence and his knowledge of the college and what he knows all the back doors um, and, and make and make life easier. And we have um, similar philosophies about the idea of student athletes. So um, it was for me the best bet for for not only me, but for the kids that we were going to be working with. And, you know, we bring up Coach Green. And one of the more impressive things that comes out every single year is that when you guys take your teams to the national championship is that you come home each time, indoor track, outdoor track, it doesn't matter. Uh, you guys come back basically every single year with Atlantic Region Coach of the Year awards and Assistant Coach of the Year awards. And, you know, like I said, if it happens every single year, and you know, it's almost like clockwork at this point. But, um, you know, how does it feel to be recognized for your team's performance like that every single year? Uh, I, I'm glad you said because somebody said that. You know, people tell me about me winning an award, and um, and I tell the kids it's not it's not my award, it's their award that I get to hold on to, because if they weren't performing at the levels that they were performing and doing the things that we asked them to do, then there would be no awards for myself or for Coach Green. So every year when I get an award, I thank them for all their hard work that allows me to get something that I can put in a box and put it on top of a shelf. Um, but that, that's what, and at first I looked at it almost, you know, I didn't care about it that much because I'm not, an, I'm not really an awards person. But once I start to look at people are recognizing the athletes on Monroe by giving me an award, then, then it makes me feel a lot better that, okay, we had kids performing at such a level that all the coaches in this area, all well, nationally, feel that we deserve that award. So it's, a, it's, a t it's truly for me a team award and they just better keep on letting me have awards because I want them to keep performing. Of course, you know, it makes my job a lot better too when I, when I see these awards coming in. Uh, it gives me even more good things to write about this team. But, you know, like I said, it's, all, it's very consistent every single year that uh, there's always something good to write about the track and field teams at Monroe College. And, you know, like I said, it's, you know, dozens and dozens of All-Americans, you know, so many of them every single year and relay teams and individuals winning national championships. So, you know, it, it's, it's too many to even list off right now. So, question I have for you is just among some of the standout athletes you've had over the past few years, you know, what are some performances or, um, you know, some, uh, you know, records that have been broken or championships that have won that have really stood out to you in your time? Um, here? Well, in terms of championships, we really only get to look at nationals because we don't have a region. There aren't as many, there aren't enough uh, D1 colleges in this area so that we can have a region. So everything that we do is about nationals. And it's, um, I guess you can be gauged by the people who go on uh, after they leave us and do well. Um, and we um, have a number of people, I guess the most, one of the most notable ones that now is out there um, is Chris. Um, who was running for Team USA. Um, and uh, is a unique person. I, I, I must say that. But, um, Chris, Chris was known while he was at Monroe for a number of things. He, he, but he was always a, always a good kid. And sometimes you don't know what effect you have on someone. Um, until the, you see them in a, in a different setting. Um, well, now would be two years ago, two pen relays ago, uh, with our freshman, um, he was there running and um, we, I brought a couple of the sprinters down uh, to see him. And he, he had been speaking with Coach Green and things. And then he takes, he just all of a sudden just takes them aside and tells, tells them how he doesn't want to hear about them giving us any trouble, and uh, spoken his uh, spoken language that they would understand, and let them know and told them how they could they could push our buttons, but at certain points, and he pointed out how they would know when they had pushed our buttons, and he said, whenever you get to that point, then you guys better back down 
And he says, you do what they say because they're only uh, doing it for your benefit. And to have somebody of that level talk to our freshmen like that was you know, very heartwarming to me. But um, uh, I mean, we have an, a couple other people who represent the country, Sarah Acho, which I, she left the year I came in and she, and I had seen her practice in the armory and I would always say, wow, I wish I could get a chance to coach that girl. Um, but I didn't have that opportunity, but she's someone who's come back and, um, you know, just talk, talk to kids and, and visited the coaches and things like that. Um, uh, we, uh, Umfu Makafani, who is South African um, and still running and doing well. Um, he, and he's an author, he's written a book. So that's uh, uh, something that I would say is just a sign of how an ath the athletes at Monroe excelled at, at a number of, of different levels. So it's not all about being able to, to run, it's about becoming productive people. And uh, I think that's something that we convey to them, that we want them to run well, and if they can get the education paid for, that's a, that's a plus, uh, but we want them to be very good and learned people and make, make their mark in, in society in, in a number of ways. And um, running is one of the toughest ways to do it because there are a whole lot of people who can run fast. But if they can contribute on other levels, then that, that's what we want. Actually a really good transition into my next couple of questions because, um, you know, on top of athletes make, you know, earning that all American recognition and winning national championships is the opportunities that they create for themselves after that. And, you know, we, if we look down the list, you know, in, in the past number of years has been, you know, nearly 60, I think, division uh, athletes that have gone on to the, the division one level to continue their collegiate careers. And, you know, that many more that have gone on to division two schools that are, you know, high profile schools where they have a chance to really compete at the national level. Um, you know, you mentioned before that you started off at Bronx Community College and you had these athletes for two years and then you wanted to see what you could do with athletes when you have them for four years. But, you know, what's it like knowing that some of the athletes are going to leave your program and, um, you know, make a name for themselves on a national level at these, it's such high profile division one, division two schools after they leave. Um, I've become more accustomed to it. <laughs> now, I, I think I look at it a little differently and kind of take pride into preparing them for someone else. Maybe it was a little selfish the way I did it before in terms of losing them after two years. But now when I, I can look and see that um, Fatan Libri is doing well, or Joanna Archer is doing well, or Lloyd McCurdy is doing well at, at their schools now, I take pride that those are Mustang graduates. And we always impress on them that they're always going to be uh, Mustangs. Um, they can go and they, they'll, they'll, get, they'll get the degrees from Texas Tech and from Clemson and in those places, but they're, they're always going to be part of Monroe College. And it's a, it's a family that's continually growing. And we want it to grow and be productive on, on a lot of different levels. That actually has me thinking because one thing that when I first got to Monroe in uh, 20, summer of 2017 is that you and Coach Green invited me into your track and field and cross country Facebook group, where I know that not only do you, you know, keep everyone up to date on what the program is doing, but also what the alumni are doing. And it's been, it's a really impressive community because everyone seems so connected and, you know, you have alumni that are commenting about some of our freshmen and sophomores and, and vice versa that, you know, the way it works. So, um, you know, what are, what are some of your best experiences with that? Just because, you know, it gives you an easy way to interact with all your former athletes and athletes that were probably here before your time even, and, and just another easy way to connect with your current athletes as well. That, that's something, I don't know how it works for, for other people uh, or for other institutions, but it, it worked very well for us because the kids know that there are past athletes here who are concerned about them. I posted uh, something about one, I posted a video of uh, one of our throwers um, not too long ago. And a young man who had just gradu graduated, um, Chisholm, sent me back a message 
about it. And he was saying, take care of her and watch out for this and watch out for that in terms of little things that he saw in her video, which I appreciated. But it goes beyond, beyond that because there are kids who, may, who were here the first year I got here and who really didn't know me. But, um, and I really didn't remember because I had such little interaction with them. Um, I ran into one of them in Lowe's parking lot. I'm walking through it and I hear this voice, Coach Hogg, Coach Hogg. I'm turning around and this person is calling me and I don't, I don't recognize them. But then he goes, I was at, I was at Monroe, you just started, blah, da, 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 da. Glad you're looking good, looking good. I asked him how he's doing. He's, he's telling me and all this stuff. So the community welcomed me into it. And there were people who I really didn't know who recognized me from being on the Facebook page and they can call me out and I'm, you know, I'm up here in Orange County and I'm running into Monroe graduates. Monroe Mustangs is sponsored by the Monroe Mustang Sideline Store, powered by our apparel partners at BSN Sports. Whether you're looking for t-shirts, hats, jackets, or accessories, the Monroe Mustang Sideline Store has it all. Gear up with the new Monroe Mustangs logo and make it your own with hundreds of customizable options, including sports-specific designs. For the month of February, you can take 20% off all orders of $80 or more when you use the promo code FEB21. That's F-E-B-2-1. Visit MonroeCollegeMustangs.com slash shop to look your best as you cheer on the Mustangs. I know that, that group has been a good resource for me too, just because you guys are so on top of showing us what the former Mustang athletes are doing at their new schools or even beyond that. And of course, it's a useful asset for me as well, even during the season, because you guys make my life so much easier and post all the results on there as well. So I don't have to look up the records or, you know, when a race is over, things like that. You know, I do my best to keep up with it, but I know I have that available to me. So you and Coach Green uh, do a great job really making my life easier, I would say. Um, but continuing with impressive things about the track and field program is the academic success that this team has had, you know, especially in my time here every single year. Uh, I know I pushed for this team to win a lot more awards, but it's really, it's become again, like clockwork. You know, I expect that I'll be writing something good about the track and field teams when it comes to academics every single year. Um, I know the last three years. Uh, we've nominated for and won the Academic Team of the Year Award for the women's out, uh, indoor track and field team. So three straight years of that. The outdoor women's track and field team, two straight years as the NJCAA Academic Team of the Year. Both of the men's indoor and outdoor teams and the cross country teams as well are always on the honorable mention list, meaning that they were they qualified for the award. And I, I know those four teams also get really close to the top of the list every single year. Um, you know, it's, it's something, you know, Monroe College as well is academics, but the track and field teams, especially every single year, you know, it's literally winning national awards like that. On top of that, um, every single year, too, the majority of the team makes it to the NJCAA all academic team list individually. And then in the past few years, which is something that is even more, something I'm even more proud of is because uh, the COSIDA academic all America team is, you know, sponsored by college sports information directors of America. So it's something, you know, an organization that I'm a member of and have been, and, the best thing I get to do is nominate student athletes for this award. So last year, Joanna Archer was the 2019-20 COSIDA Academic All-America Team Member of the Year for the Women's College Division at Large team, which covers all two-year schools. And I believe there's another division. I think it might be Canada, but um, there aren't too many athletes that end up winning the award about all the, all the ones that are nominated. And she was the Team Member of the Year. And Lloyd McCurdy and Kajan Paris were also on the uh, Coastside Academic All-America team among five Monroe student athletes. And I think roughly 12 total athletes were named to this list. So just something that, you know, we're, we're basically dominating that the last two years when they created a division for ourselves. The year before that, 2018, 2019, you had Avon Samuels, Tapello McAfani, and Chisholm Inequechi, Chisholm you mentioned before. Again, we're three of five Mustangs named to the Coastside Academic All-America team. And I think, again, that year, I think there were only 11 total athletes. So again, just um, us dominating. And then, you know, if you take out the other sports, if you just have Monroe's track and field athletes, we would still have them, you know, uh, the most athletes of any team on those lists. Um, I, I could go on and on about the academic success, but 
my question for you is how, how is that you've managed to make this a year in and year out thing that your student athletes are being recognized for the academic success? Does it, you know, what does it say about the student athletes you recruit and the environment that you and coach green and I guess Monroe college itself has created for them to find the success? Uh, well, in reality, we're not going out looking for the best academic students we could find to, to be part of it. Um, and a lot of times when people look at junior college athletes, they're looking at some, well, there was some deficiency and that's why they're at junior college. And, you know, they, they look a little askance up there at their academic performance. Um, but with us, uh, and I credit Coach Green with an immense portion of it, is that there's a buy-in. Um, you come here and you tell us that your talent is gonna take you um, to this particular, to your dream school. And first thing you, got, you have to understand that just your talent is not gonna take you there because if you can't perform academically, then coaches are gonna be really hesitant about you because they don't want to bring you into their program and then you have you fail out two semesters later or, or you're ineligible or, or something like that. So presenting athletics and academics as a, a necessary package that you have to have both pieces for in order to be successful and having them buy into that and, and providing them um, with the resources and the support because we run our own um, tutoring sessions. We have mandatory tutoring sessions, which the kids uh, go to. If you don't go to tutoring, you don't run. Um, those things impress upon them how seriously we take this. And the fact that it's happened so many years is it's now become a, a tradition. It's, it's part of the expectation of being a Mustang track and field athlete. We pride ourselves on having a good team grade point average. And that team is each and every one as an individual has to do well. And you don't wanna be the one that has to post um, on our Facebook page that you guys didn't do well academically because the graduates are gonna let you, they're gonna let you know about it. Um, they, know, they know what it's taken for them to, to leave here and then be success at be successes at the next level. So their expectations of the, the kids who are on the team now is, okay, this is what we had to do. And we don't expect you to do anything less than that. We've established this and we don't want you to screw it up. So you guys better hit the books and do what you're supposed to do so that we can keep this tradition going. It really, it really is incredible. And like I said, I, I, I just come to expect that some big award, if not multiple big awards, is going to be won by this team. You know, I didn't even mention the, you know, Academic All-American Awards from the USTF CCCA that you guys get every single year. It's, it, you know, it's, it's just incredibly impressive. And while I said, you know, Monroe College, we're doing that really well at almost every one of our sports, but, um, you know, the track and field team really makes itself stand out every single year. Um, I want to I want to now get get to uh, what's going on with the program today. Um, of course, you know we start back a year ago, almost right around this time, about a month from now, really. Um, you know, around this time, you know, you're getting ready for the end of the uh, 2020 indoor season, and of course, again, that you know national championship uh, meet went really well, as it always does for us. Um, but in between the indoor season ending and the outdoor season starting was when the COVID-19 pandemic hit and the outdoor season, unfortunately, just, you know, as well as our baseball season and softball season and, you know, with everyone else across the country, just, it didn't get to happen. Um, unfortunately, you know, baseball and softball got a few games in, but you guys didn't even get to start the outdoor season. Um, so of course that was a tough time. So I guess the first question on, on this topic is, what was it like to speak to your athletes the day that we decided that, or the day that, you know, it was basically decided for us that the spring seasons were over and, um, you know, telling them that, unfortunately, that was it for this year. That was a very difficult time and a very difficult events that we had to go through. Um, it was especially a difficult time for our sophomores who were hoping to use the outdoor season um, 
to establish them, themselves and get them into those dream schools that they were interested in. Some of them were lucky enough to already have some offers. And um, between Coach Green and I, we knew of coaches that were interested in some of the kids, maybe hadn't reached out to them yet. So they ended up um, maybe not going where they may have had the opportunity to go in May, but they had some place to go that was going to take care of them because we always look for schools that they think that we think are fitting for them. Um, and they were taken care of. So once that was done, then it's dealing with disappointment by, by the coaches and, and by the, the athletes. Um, things were promising and then it's it snatched away from you. But, but um, one of the things that I know I told them um, the, is that they were, because a lot of them voiced concerns that they didn't want the season to end. Um, I said they weren't doing it uh, as much for themselves as they were doing it for their families and their grandparents, that they needed to be out of situations that could become harmful to them and then and, and change affect uh, their, their family members. And they, they seem to understand that portion of it um, and, and did, what they, did what they had to do um, and, it, and accepted it. To do what you have to do and gripe and complain is one thing but to do what you have to do and accept the hardships that come along with it um, is another. Um, I tried to, or did my best to stay in touch with as many of the athletes as I could, giving them calls every now and then to see how they were doing. Um, and then we get around and, and we're, rooting, we're recruiting kids to come in in August. And I, we don't even know at that point whether they're gonna be able to get out of their countries to come um, to, to the US and, and a couple of them came in and right after they got here, their borders closed. So it was like, you're here and you, you can't go anywhere. So, you know, you, you're kind of stuck here. But um, we've worked very hard to uh, keep them focused. Um, it was tough when you didn't have cross country season, they come in in August and then we don't have a cross country season. So those middle distance and distance kids have three months that they were looking at to be competitive with something and that's just gone. And then we get the indoor season. And again, uh, there's another couple of months, uh, uh, th they're training and uh, I have to give them the props that with all that's come around, going on around them, they've managed to be consistent in their training and stay focused and um, there are a lot of rules that we have to try and maintain their safety. Um, and we don't get any pushback or, you know, in terms of, oh, well, you know, you can't go out and do this. You can't go out and do that. You need to stay in your room. Uh, when, you, when you're not at practice, you don't need to have a lot of associations with other people, other teams and, and things like that. Stay in groups because we, 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 we place them in pods um, so that we know who was, who was associating with who. Um, in case anything happened and we, we lucky nothing ha has happened. Um, but at all the times they've been on point. Um, they've managed to change their focus, their focal points to the next thing. Okay, we didn't have cross country. Let's see what we can do for indoor. We didn't have indoor. Let's see what we can do for outdoors. So they just want to compete. And, uh, and as long as they can keep it in mind that somewhere along this line, hopefully this this year, they're going to get to compete. They're, they're all right. They seem to be a very focused group, at, focused as a group, um, because they have to depend on one another a lot um, just for encouragement that they, they um, are backing each other up at practice and kind of nudging each other on and don't let anybody get too low about anything. Um, it, this one, this is for really forced that kind of family attitude because they're, they're, they are their family for right now. Some of them still couldn't go home if they, if they uh, had to because they can't get out the country. Um, but uh, I think they've handled it extremely well. Uh, Monroe has made it, um, uh, I can't say made it a pleasurable experience, made it an acceptable experience uh, so that they're still attached to the school 
even after all the things that are going on. Yeah, I mean, it's all, there's only so much you could really do right now. I think it's still a learning experience for everybody because we just, you still don't know what, you know, everything that, that this virus is doing to everybody. So it's hard to necessarily figure out the perfect environment to keep everyone happy and safe. And, um, you know, when it comes to athletics, you know, there's so much that are, that's involved. And especially when it comes to track and field, you guys are training so much and there's plenty of training you could do individually, but, um, you know, everyone still has to be super careful. So I, I, you know, I imagine the challenges that go along with that, but one thing I actually probably should have mentioned earlier and forgot to ask about was, um, there is a heavy, heavy international influence on this program. Um, so many international athletes that compete for the cross country and track and field teams here every single year. And that's just an extra burden for them when they come here is not only just getting used to being in the United States, being in New York, being right near New York city, but also now, um, the fact that a lot of them are essentially stuck here and they can't get home or then you had others that, um, are probably, you know, had to make the decision to not come here yet necessarily. Um, so how, how is it being able to, or having to kind of make sure that a lot of the international athletes are comfortable and, um, are enjoying their experience the best they can right now? Um, this goes back to, I guess, uh, alumni, because a lot of the internationals are here because someone from their country came here. Um, and we have some kids who are in NCAA schools um, who are kind of in the same situation that they can't go home for one reason or another. And we found that they've checked up on the kids who are here. Um, so one, country has four kids that we got and we have two that are in, that are in NCAA schools and they call and check up on them. Um, and since it's a, a continual stream, the coaches know that they can call and check up or they'll call us and say, how so-and-so doing? And then they'll give them an only, well, this is what's going on back home. Just wanted to let you know, and we're in touch with, with the coaches at Monroe and they're telling us how you're doing. So they might not be home, but they're not separated from home because there are people who are home who are checking on them. There are people who are in the States that are checking on them and they don't, they don't feel lost in, in all this. And we try and we, and we do our best to um, give them support and, and do little things. Um, they forced me to become a baker. Um, so I, I will have to bake cakes occasionally for them for holidays and things like that. Um, but yeah, we, we, we want it to be, we want them to be as comfortable uh, while they're here as possible. And that just goes to show how much of a family environment it's become with the, especially with the track and field team that not only, you know, they athletes are knowing each other from their home countries, but then they know about each other here. And then they, as alumni, they're still part of the program so actively. So, um, it, you know, it's great to hear that, you know, that really goes back a number of generations, basically of Monroe athletes and, you know, the relationships that are formed in just two years when, you know, some programs that are for your programs probably don't establish the relationships that this one does. Um, but the last thing I want to discuss today is that, you know, you mentioned how the cross country season didn't happen and indoor season didn't happen, but you didn't say that about the outdoor season because, as of right now, we have the green light, you know, the, the clouds, storm clouds are dissipating, the grass is getting greener. We're looking forward to competing in the next couple of months. So what are some things you're looking forward to this team? You know, we haven't usually around this time, we already know about the track and field team and, you know, what they did in cross country season, what they did in the indoor season. And now, right now we're going in cold for the outdoor season for us. So uh, what are some of the things we can look forward to and some of the things that you're looking forward to with the outdoor track and field season this year? Uh, we just we just met with them uh, on that very on that very talk with, um, told them that it, it looks promising that we would be able to compete outdoors. We're trying to come up with a schedule and know what we have to do to be able to go to some of these competitions for them. But um, we're just pointing at it as an opportunity for them to shine. Um, they've worked real hard over these last six months, I guess it is. And uh, I can't say for sure, you know, what they're going to look like if we get to run in, in 
April. Um, I know they'll give us their best and that's all we ever asked for, but it, it, it'll be an opportunity to step up for some of the, for some of the sophomores, a couple of sophomores, it, they'll have an opportunity to show what they can do. For the freshmen, uh, we tell them this is an opportunity for them to get on someone's radar, knowing that everybody's going through the same, um, has, has had the same setbacks and um, are going through the same trials that they're going to. So, hey, everybody's gonna be on the same page. Somebody may be a little ahead of you, some may be a little behind you, but you just gotta go out there and, and do the best. I just want them to run. We'll look for some meets that we think are, um, won't, won't be compromising them um, and, and give them an opportunity to perform. And then we'll see what happens. I mean, they had indoor nationals. We can make outdoor nationals a, a goal. We don't know what, what the, what the um, circumstances of the virus will be uh, by the time May rolls around. Hopefully it'll be um, at a point where we can get on a plane and, and go to nationals. And if not, we'll, we'll deal with that if it comes. But we just, I just want them to be able to go out there and show what they can do um, and prove to, prove to the world that no matter what stands in their way, they're Mustangs and, and they can overcome anything that, get, that happens. That was very well said and uh, I appreciate the way that you phrase that and you know I know I think I speak for everybody in our athletic department when we say we're really looking forward to seeing what a lot of our athletes can do this year um, knowing that they've worked so hard and they've done so done so well with following the protocols and just having the most unconventional year of college athletics that you can imagine so you know I, you know obviously we we have our fingers crossed we're really hoping we're uh, going to keep following those protocols keep everyone safe and make sure that we can do everything we can to, you know, get our track and field team out there for some events, you know, get our baseball team on the field, softball team on the field, soccer, you know, whatever we can get, you know, um, is obviously a, a plus this year, but coach, Hodge, I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, that about wraps up our time here, but, um, I appreciate your time. Um, I know all the hard work that you and coach green have been putting in this year to make sure your student athletes are, you know, staying in shape, uh, getting ready to compete, you know, and, and obviously keeping up in the classroom because, you know, can't, we can't drop that expectation just because, you know, they, everyone's quarantined or doing it virtually, you know, the same expectations exist. So, um, you know, of all, of all the teams I know are doing well, I'm sure uh, I could say the same things about the track and field team this year as I do every single year. Um, so again, I want to thank you so much for all your time today, um, for enlightening us on what's going on with the track and field program and letting us know your history in track and field. Uh, I'm sure, you know, I learned plenty today and I'm sure our audience learned a lot as well. Um, for those of you at home, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you subscribe to our channel on YouTube, mon uh, youtube.com slash Monroe Mustangs. Uh, you could also follow this show on Instagram on our, on our IGTV page at Monroe Mustangs. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. Coach Hogg, thanks again. Stay safe. Uh, looking forward to what your team's going to do this year. And uh, for the rest of you at home, thanks for hanging with us this week, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.